is Mike from Minimal 3DP and today I'm doing a quick video on retraction settings. I have a project I'm working on and I need to really do some tuning on one of my printers to get this right. So I thought we could do it together. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to give you a little background on this project. For those of you that don't know, I, I live in Paris, Tennessee. And of course, we have our own mini Eiffel Tower. And my wife's asked me, they have a little word they're going to give out to someone. And they've asked me to create an Eiffel Tower. As you can see from this model, there's probably a good chance there's going to be a lot of stringing here. I'm also using a metallic silk filament. And let me bring up a link for that. So here's the filament I'm going to use, and I don't think I've used this filament before, although I might have. But I mean, one of the main reasons I got it was it was on sale and cheap. As you can see, it's 30% off. So it was a pretty big discount on it. But that being said, I'm going to load this into my printer and then do some retraction tests in order to eliminate as much string as possible. Because again, going back to that model, it looks like there's going to be lots of little places for there to be stringing. Now, I chose this model because it's two pieces and I figured... If I had problems printing it, printing it in two pieces would make things easier. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start the retraction tuning tests. So I'm going to do the retraction tuning via Orca Slicer. And so let's just go up right here to the calibration section and I'm going to select retraction test. Now we need to set this up. The settings are different depending on whether I'm using a direct drive or I'm using a Bowden tube. In my case, I'm using a direct drive. For a direct drive printer, I probably want to start retraction length of zero. That means there's no retraction whatsoever and then a end retraction length at two millimeters and then do a step of 0.1. Now on a Bowden tube printer, I probably want to start a retraction length of one and then maybe an end retraction length of about six millimeters and do that step at 0.2. But in my case, I'm just going to leave it as is. And just for a reminder, I'm using this on an Ender 3 S1 Plus, which is used in the Sprite Pro Extruder, which is direct drive. I'm just going to hit OK. So as you can see, I have a lot of loaded. If I zoom in, just look at this carefully, each one of these lines equals a 0.1 increment. And we can see again, it's a very small model. This has changed some of my settings and let's go ahead and hit slice plate and then we'll send it to the printer. Now we've sliced it. I'm just going to point out that this is about an eight minute print. So that's excellent. It's going to be pretty quick. So let's hit print and I'm just going to upload and send this to the printer. So we'll let that print and we'll come back in a couple minutes. So as you can see, I've printed out my model. I'm really not seeing much string except down here at zero and point one. And what I'm going to do is pull my magnifying glass down and just see if I can see anything. I'm trying to see if there's a layer here where it just looks like there's very little along the seams. You just look at this. And let me count up. I think I'm going to go right about in here, this area here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be 0.6. Well, let's do 0.5. So I think 0.5 retraction is about what I want. So let's pause and let's go back over to Orca Slicer. So in Orca Slicer, Retraction's actually in two different places. It's under printer, and we'll take a look here are my defaults. So it's 0.8 is my default, 0.4, and then 30 retraction speed. Now, what we're going to do is look at this filament here. And if we go to filament under settings overrides, we can actually create some overrides just specifically for this filament. I'm going to hit the save button here, and I'm going to change this to silk PLA. That way I have two different PLA profiles and I'm going to change this to 0.6 or I'm sorry, 0.5. Z-hop when retracting is 0.4. Z-hop type is normal. Retraction speed 30 and detract speed is going to be 30 as well based on 
what my previous setting is. In fact, leave that there. And let's take a, a quick, let's save this and let's look back in our settings again and just compare the two. You can see all these values here. And I think I can just leave those as is on my overrides. Now, with that being said, what I probably could do is let's just turn off everything. The only override I'm going to do is on the link. And so let's leave that as is. Let's hit save. And now I have a separate profile for the Silk ELA. And this should let me print my model and we'll see how that looks once it's done. So let me load up the model and then we'll print it. And I'll probably come back after eight or nine hours and we'll take a look. As you can see, I've loaded the top of the Eiffel Tower. And the reason why I went with the top was it prints quicker. The base is actually about 16 hours. This takes about seven, as you can see here. So we're just going to do this. One change I made here was I did put a brim on the bottom. Looking at this, this actually looks pretty good. Now I did do only 10% filament, or I'm sorry, 10% infill. That's okay. These seams don't look bad. They're not going to be noticeable. So that being said, let's go ahead and print. We'll come back and take a look and see if my retraction, how it looks. So we'll let this print and then come back and take a look. So I've switched over to my desk cam. And as you can see, I've printed the top of the Eiffel Tower. And if you look carefully, there's still some stringing in there. What I've done is created a torture test from the first layer of the Eiffel Tower and done a whole bunch of different tests with it. So let me just show you what I found. Now, if you remember, initially I started off with a retraction speed of 30. I went and started bumping that up by 10 and I took it all the way to 60 and didn't really notice any improvements, but also did notice anything getting worse. So by upping the speed, I've actually cut down on how long it takes to print. Then what I did was I took the, I took that 60 speed and tried a couple different settings. So one of the first things I did was took 60 and then bumped it down to 0.4 retraction distance and then 0.2 for the Z hop. So I've used both those. And by default, I use the normal setting in Orca Slicer. So let me show you that. So you can see here is my torture test over in Orca Slicer. And if I go back over to my filament profile under overrides, here is the Z hop type, and that's normal. So in that last test that I was showing you, I had this set to normal. Let's take a, a quick look here. I'm going to slice the plate and let me tilt this up. And I'm going to turn on the travel and also move down a little bit. Okay. And if you look, You'll notice the travel when it's moving off a printed part, it's just moving in a straight line. So that's pretty regular travel. Again, not doing anything special. It's leaving the printed part in a straight line, going to the next area to print. And let me show you the next setting I tried. The next setting I tried, if we're going back over filament profile under the overrides, let's take a quick look at spiral. Spiral I discovered is the idea that before leaving the printed part, the print head does a little spiral in order to get off any excess filament. And so literally it adds these little circles. So as it's leaving the printed part, before it leaves the printed part, it goes in a little circle, tries to get rid of any excess filament, and then moves to the next printed part. Now we switch back over to my desk cam. We're gonna look at the normal piece and there's still some straining but if i look at the one with the spiral i actually think 
that that has less string, at least from some angles. It appears to me to have less stringy. So I'm going to leave the spiral on. And let's just look at what that does for print time. On my torture test, right now it's taking 54 minutes or 55 minutes, let's say, to print. Let's go over here and change this back to normal. I'm going to hit save and let's slice the plate. And that changes it by about 10 minutes. So that does add some significant time to the print. Now, in my case, because I'm looking at this from a quality standpoint, not a speed benchy standpoint, I'm okay with it taking more time. And honestly, for the top part of my Eiffel Tower, which took about seven hours to print under normal, now takes approximately eight hours. So it added some time. Now, I have one last test I tried because I went through various documentation and hints. And one of the things that was suggested was to try, particularly with silk PLA, bumping the temperature down by 10 degrees. So on my last test, I printed with all the same settings. This one is my normal temperature, and then this one is at 10 degrees less than I normally print at. So instead of 205, I printed at 195. And I'll be honest, this appears to give me the least amount of stringing. So when I did this, this didn't change the time, but I actually think this gave me a much better result. And so I'm going to print the model based off of that new setting. So I saved everything. I printed. Now I'm going to show you this one on this side is my original profile with just the tests built into Orca. And then the new one is the one where I've made all these changes. Now it's hard to say, try to get this, but the one on the right is actually significantly better and has a lot less strength. So this is the settings I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with, find it. I'm going to go with a 0.4 retraction, 0.2 Z hop, 60 millimeters per second speed, for the retraction. I'm going to do the spiral, even though that adds some significant time, and then bump my temperature down to 195. It doesn't wind up adding that much time to my print. It does add about an hour, but from my standpoint, I like the quality. Now, I'm just going to throw out there because this is the story of my life. My wife didn't care which one was which. In fact, I had to show her what stringing was, and she said, yeah, it doesn't really matter. She thought the one with lots of stringing was fine. So, and I did all these experiments for me as opposed to what she wanted. Again, hopefully you find this helpful and useful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Have a good day. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.